You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Our friends over at 24-7 Sports um, took a stab, and obviously they do a really good job at 24-7, at as do On3 and, and all, you know, rivals all the scouting services. They all do a really good job. Uh, they took a stab at which true freshmen uh, in 2023 have a chance of really being impact players in their true freshman year. And there was uh, an LSU player on the list, but I think they got the wrong player. Uh, the player they mentioned is uh, Zalance Hurd. And I don't mean that in any way to be a knock on Zalance Hurd, who is a monster. Dude has a seven foot wingspan, a 30, you know, 37 inch arms. He's a monster and he's got the mean streak. He was a defensive lineman, converted to offensive line. And I think Zalance Hurd is going to be a freak show stud during his time at LSU. The problem is. LSU returns its top six offensive linemen from a year ago, including both bookend tackles who were freshmen. And you've also brought in Mason Lunsford, a transfer from Maryland, who's got 40 starts in his career. So you've got seven players ahead of Zalance Hurd. Now, that's not to say Hurd isn't able to come in and win a job. We saw Emory Jones do that. Emory Jones wasn't the game one starter at right tackle. But he got some run against Southern, and it was like, okay, by the time you got past that, it was like, yeah, put the kid in there. And had some growing pains. They took their lumps, but Campbell and Jones proved to be a phenomenal starting tackle tandem. So you could look at it and say, Brian Kelly isn't afraid to play a freshman. Clearly, he started two freshman tackles a year ago. And the thing that we know about Brian Kelly, we've talked about so much, is Brian Kelly recruits and develops offensive linemen and tight ends. That's the position more than any other that he has pumped into the NFL at an elite level during his coaching career. So I got no problem with it. By the way, here was Brian Kelly on Zalance Hurd back on National Signing Day. I like Zalance Hurd. I like his personality. He's extremely confident. In recruiting him early on, as we were going through the process, he said, Coach, you know I'm only going to play left tackle, and that's it. I said, well, we got a true freshman, Will Campbell, playing left tackle right now. He's pretty good. He goes, well, I've seen Will Campbell play. I played with Will Campbell. I'm playing left tackle. And ever since that time, I was like, I like this kid. Just his confidence. And it, it wasn't cocky, but it was it was a confidence. And um, believes in what he's doing and what he can do for this program. And then we put him through the ringer now. And we got eyes on him. And we watched him and watched him. We, we put him through the, the ringer. And um, he passed every test for us. So feel great about him being in the program. I love it. So I, I, so my only point of disagreeing isn't that I think it's any knock on Zalance Hurd. I think he's going to be magnificent. Why would you disagree with Brian Kelly? Like He's a guy who knows this position more than any other. So yeah, of course. Um, but I, it's, it's just that they've got so much experience and depth there already. It's going to be hard to crack the rotation. So for me, I, like we may look back in three or four years at the 2023 class and say Zalance Hurd was the gem of that class. The guy who had the best college career, went on to be a you know a, a top 10 pat, a draft pick as a you know, franchise left tackle. That may happen. I, God, I hope it does for the kid. But I'm just looking at this year. As a true freshman, Like who has the opportunity to come in and be an immediate impact guy? So I look at, okay, who are the best players at the biggest position of need or the thinnest position coming in who have a path to the field immediately like it's not offensive line it's not linebacker I mean LSU coaches are thrilled with wit weeks but when you look at linebacker you brought in Omar Spates who was all pack 12 last year you're moving Harold Perkins inside you got Greg Penn who started a bulk of the season for you last year you got West Weeks who's now a veteran player for you as well Wit Weeks is going to be I think a very special linebacker the coaches love him how's he going to get on the field this year I think is a big question Wide receiver, Shelton Sampson, Jalen Brown, five-star talents. Yeah, but you got Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas and Kyron Lacey and Chris Hilton, and you brought in Aaron Anderson. It's not to say they can't. It's just going to be harder to get onto the field. So I look at two positions, and it's defensive back and it's it's edge rusher. And I look at two players, JV and Toviano 
and Deshaun Womack. Those are the guys that I think have the biggest opportunity. Brian Kelly in this, look, Javion Toviano was here in the spring. And he signed as a safety, but in spring, they played him everywhere. They played him at safety. They played him at nickel. They played him at boundary corner. They moved him all over the field because they realize he, in a at a position where you're replacing all of your cornerbacks, you know, you're at safety, you, you, know, you lost Joe Fouché to the draft. And yeah, you got Greg Brooks and Major Burns, but Sage Ryan, Matthew Langlois, veteran guys, how really much do you count on them? Like there's an opportunity in the defensive backfield for JV and Tobiano. Here was Brian Kelly coming out of spring about to- Tobiano and his flexibility in that defensive backfield. He's playing some nickel uh, for us right now and, and some safety. So he's a guy that has that, that flexibility. Um, we'll play him a little bit at corner here in the last week, going into the last week. But right now he's the guy that we have singled out is, is playing a little bit of cor- uh, excuse me, nickel and safety. So Toviano is one of the guys. Like maybe Greg Brooks ends up playing safety and Toviano ends up being your nickel. Like it may play out that way. So Toviano is one that I would circle and say that kid has a major opportunity as a freshman to get on the field and be an impact guy. The other is Deshaun Womack. And I, look, Womack is, is a five-star who everybody was talking about. He and Hurd are the two highest-rated players in this class. So there's a, there's a lot of reason, and maybe that feels like chalk. But I would also say LSU went and, and attacked the interior defensive line in the portal. To add to Mason Smith, Makai Wingo, I mean, Jacoby and Guillory, and then you go add Lee and Jefferson and... Paris Shand, like, you've got so many bodies on the interior. Taiji Hill. The edge is where you have the question mark. Because your top sack guys of a year ago are gone. Now, Harold Perkins is back, but he's moving to the inside. He's still going to be a pass rusher in spots. But who is the who is the B.J. Ojolari in this defense? Well, he's not there, at least that you know. And you brought in two edge guys. You brought in Ovi Agofu from Texas, who had been with Brian Kelly at Notre Dame. Well, Agofu last year had eight and a half tackles for loss and two and a half sacks. Those numbers aren't going to blow you away. Braden Swinson last year at Oregon had one and a half tackles for loss and no sacks last year. So in his three years at Oregon, Swinson had five and a half tackles for loss and three sacks. In three years. So you don't really have skins on the wall. You got guys that have played a lot of football but haven't stockpiled numbers as as a pass rusher. So there's an opportunity there for for Womack. I think that's, that's very obvious. So... Um, those are the two spots that I look at to say who are the the true freshmen in this class that have the biggest opportunity to make an impact on the 2023 season. And I'm looking at Javion Toviano in the defensive backfield in some spot, and I'm looking at Deshaun Womack to see if he can be the real impact edge rushing presence. I, I don't want to put the pressure on to say that Harold Perkins was a year ago, but in obvious pass rushing situations, when you got to get somebody athletic to come off the edge, can he be that guy? If so then he could be one we're talking about freshman All-America at the end of the year. Those are the two that I'm circling. I'm saying Toviano, Womack. Keep an eye on those two in their two, uh, true freshman season in 2023. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.